Hello and welcome to a new game. CCC 11 round 3 is about to start, but until it does, let's see now a bonus tournament from um, TCC. There is a tournament with viewer submitted openings going on. And this is now the bonus 5 tournament and game 26, played between Komodo and Lila. And we have an English opening with c4, knight f6, knight c3, and now after e6 and knight f3, we have bishop b4, the Nimzo English opening or Nimzo English variation of uh, the English opening, where as in the Nimzo, black comes up with this bishop and in some variations tries to damage white's queenside structure by taking this knight. The main move in this position is queen c2 in order to prevent that and recapture here with the queen. Alternatively, white can play d4 and uh, transpose back into the three knights variation of the Nimzo. So in this one we have queen c2 and now c5 and g3. Now with this c pawn moved forward two squares, this uh, diagonal is slightly weaker. So it makes sense to, uh, to develop this bishop here. We have knight c6, bishop g2, castles, castles, and now queen e7. And here in this position, white has to decide how to um, develop the remaining pieces and what to do with these um, central pawns. In the game, we had d3. And uh, this pretty much prevents d5 from black because of the d5. There's um, tension between these pawns. And with uh, bishop g5, white can already start uh, causing some problems to black here. Instead of d3, the alternative would be to play e3 here and maybe try to get in d4. But now with the bishop not really coming out on this diagonal, black can already uh, strike at white center with d5. So in this one we have d3 and now h6 trying to prevent this bishop g5 and trying to get in d5, but now here comes e4, stopping that. And now after d6, we reached the end of the book. And we are following the game Hübner versus Tal from the 1976 Beal Interzonal Tournament, where Hübner uh, played knight h4, and after rook b8, also played f4 with a kingside attack, in the meantime, Tal prepared b5 to con c4 and got some really nice counterplay on the queen side and in the center and eventually managed to win. Tal finished that interzonal on uh, the fourth place after um, Bent Larsen, Tigran Petrosian and uh, Portis Lajos. Eventually Korsnoy won the candidates and um, qualified for the World Championship match against Karpov in 1978. In this one, instead of knight h4, we have a3 hitting that bishop. And uh, here Lila played bishop a5, preserving this bishop. Of course, bishops worth a bit more than knights. So unless black gets some immediate advantage, it's not a good idea to trade this bishop for um, that knight. We have now bishop d2 and a6, preparing b5. Rook b1, rook b8, h3 and now bishop d7. And since there's a hole here on, on d4, white would really like to get rid of it. And uh, he played here b4. And after c takes, pawn takes, and bishop takes, now this pawn is unblocked and can advance. But in return, Komodo gave up the b4 pawn. So he's a pawn down now. We have d4, threatening d5, and uh, picking up that bishop, which is hanging. We have a5 defending, e5 now hitting this knight and forcing it away from his uh, f6 square. We have pawn takes, pawn takes, and now knight a7, bishop e3, and now with the d file opened up, we have bishop e8 removing the bishop from that file and preparing maybe to uh, challenge white on, on this uh, d file. We have queen b3 and now b6 defending a5, rook d1. And now f6. d6 is a weak spot in, in black's territory. The pawn is defending that square, so Lila is attacking this pawn to get rid of him and uh, win over the d6 square before uh, one of those knights, maybe, or a rook lands on that square. And now instead of pawn takes on f6 that Lila was expecting, Komodo went for some tactics. He played here knight d5 
giving up a piece for two very strong connected passed pawns. The point now is that if the pawn takes here, then after pawn takes on d5, this knight is attacked. And the uh, knight takes on e5 is not good because after knight takes, none of these uh, captures are really good for black. For example, if the queen takes, then uh, bishop f4 is good hitting these two uh, pieces. And um, after queen c3, queen takes, bishop takes, bishop takes rook and bishop takes on a1. After white recaptures, black has these two connected passers, but white also has a very, very strong pawn here on d5. And he also has the bishop pair, which is uh, very, very strong in this position. And white would do quite well in this uh, variation. Instead of queen takes on e5, black could try to take with the pawn, but this now runs into d6 check, attacking the queen. And uh, saving the queen with queen f7 doesn't work because of uh, bishop d5. And the only way to actually save the queen is to play bishop f7 and counterattack this queen on c3. And after pawn takes and bishop takes queen, white can continue by taking this rook with check. And after king takes and rook d7, white is again somewhat better in this position, uh, being an exchange up. So knight e5 is, uh, is not really good in this position. So Lila went knight d8. But now after e6, Komodo has these very, very strong pawns. However, if Lila manages to uh, keep control over d6 and prevent these pawns from advancing, then uh, she's doing fine. Here Komodo is uh, threatening bishop f4 now, hitting this rook, but also uh, defending the d6 square. So at this point, Lila gave up a pawn, the b6 pawn, to strengthen control over d6 and played here knight b7. Now, the point is that if bishop f4, then after knight d6, black is completely fine. These pawns are nicely blockaded. But instead, we have bishop takes on b6. And now Lila is a pawn down, but this bishop can't really go to any of these squares to uh, support d6. On the other hand, this bishop on b6 is attacking this pawn on a5. So Lila played here bishop h5 with the idea of connecting the rooks. Now, if bishop takes here, then of course, just simply uh, knight takes. And uh, the rook can't take here because this rook is not hanging. The other rook defends it. And uh, if Komodo would try here g4 to hit this bishop, then uh, knight d6 again is good, counterattacking this bishop on b6. When again, bishop takes here is not a problem since uh, black doesn't lose a piece because of the attack on the queen. So g4 doesn't work either. Instead, we have rook c1, and now bishop takes on f3, queen takes on f3, and now this rook is uh, threatening to get in here to c7, so we have rook c8 guarding the c7 square. But now comes rook c6, when if Lila would take this rook, then after pawn takes, this knight would have to go, and that would allow Komodo to win now this pawn on, on a5, and even though he would be a piece down, uh, this uh, c-pawn gives enough counterplay for white here for equality. This pawn is uh, also defended by the bishop, so uh, white would be fine. But instead of rook c6, Lila played here f5, intending to bring this knight back to f6. At this point, Lila is already confident that she can stop these pawns, and uh, she's evaluating the position at minus 1. Komodo continued now with queen d3, and now Lila decided to give up this a5 pawn in order to win some time and uh, organize her pieces into the defense and uh, stop these pawns. So she played here knight d6, which drops this pawn on a5, but also exchanges a pair of pieces. And the more pieces go off the board, the easier uh, Lila's job in this game is. So we have now bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes, and now knight f6, and now Komodo played rook c5, and this pretty much forces now a rook exchange, otherwise if the rook moves away, then rook c7 comes. We have rook takes, and now the point is that Komodo can recapture with the pawn and unblock this pawn, which was blocked by the knight. Let's see now if Lila can block this pawn again. We have rook c8, this pretty much stops c7, 
queen b3 now, king h7, rook e5, and now rook c7. And uh, both pawns are again nicely stopped. We have bishop f3 and now g6. And now Komodo attacks the f5 pawn with g4. And Lila responded here with knight e8. At this point, Lila is convinced that she's winning. And now the point is that if this pawn takes here, then after knight takes here, black is uh, even better. This knight is in a very, very strong position here on f5, very close to the king. And if, uh, if rook d5 with this idea, then knight d6. And uh, the knights are defending each other very, very nicely. And white can be better in, in this position. Instead of g takes on f5, we have king g2, but now Lila played knight g7 not only defending f5 but also attacking e6 and in order to win this game lila needs to somehow get rid of uh, of these two pawns we have now bishop d5 defending both and now knight e8 and lila found a way here to reconfigure her pieces and uh, win down one of the white pawns now this one on c6 is hard to win because it's hard to maneuver the knights to attack it. But the e6 pawn is, is uh, much easier to attack. And Lila's plan is to play here queen d6, and then rook e7, and then the other knight to c7. And all four of Lila's pieces would attack this pawn on e6, and uh, Komodo would lose it. There would be nothing to do at that point. We have queen c4, and now queen d6 going with that plan. Rook e3, and now rook e7, rook d3 and knight c7 and everyone is in position and this pawn will fall next we have first g takes on f5 pawn takes on f5 and now after bishop f3 hitting this queen the queen can just simply take on e6 and now we have komodo avoiding the queen exchange which is a logical move without the queens lila would have a much easier job in uh, winning this game since uh, she would be able to activate her king we have now knight e8. Now that the e6 pawn is gone, the knight reroutes itself to f6 and wants to go to e4, where the knight would be very, very aggressively placed, even closer to the white king. But more importantly, with the knight on e4, this bishop wouldn't defend anymore this pawn on c6, and also the d5 square would be maybe available for this knight, which then could easily jump to f4 with a check. And with two knights on f4 and uh, e4, the white king would be in a very, very big trouble. So the game now continued with queen c5. And now we have queen e5, again trying a queen exchange, but the Komodo avoids it. And now we have knight f6, heading to e4. And at this point, seeing what's coming with knight e4 and knight e5, knight f4, and then maybe some checks. Komodo actually decided to exchange the queens as he felt that his king is now in much bigger danger than Lila's king and played queen c3 here. But Lila, of course, is very happy to exchange the queens because now her king can uh, get active and uh, help win down the pawn on c6. We have king g6, king g3, knight e4 check, exchanging another piece, bishop takes, rook takes, rook c5, king f6, rook c3, rook d4, h4, and now rook back to d8. This rook is coming to c8 to attack this pawn. King f3, rook c8, king g3, and now knight e6. And uh, Lila has to just come over with the king and uh, take this pawn. We have rook c4, and now rook c7, blocking the pawn. Rook c2, and now king e5, rook e2 check, king d6. Rook d2 check, and now finally Lila wins down the c6 pawn. And with those two pawns gone, she has now a very, very easy task in, in winning this game with her extra piece on e6. We have rook a2, and now king d6. Rook a5 hitting this pawn. Rook c5, rook a6 check, king e7, f3, king f6, rook a2, rook d5. And after a couple of uh, more moves, eventually... In this position of the rook a2, the game was adjudicated in Lila's favor. A nice win with black in the English opening. I would like to thank to René, Adolf, André and everyone else who donated to my channel. Visit the store and check out two of my other games on the right. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.